Hello and welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Joining me today is Lee Cox with the Caldwell County Fair. Welcome, Lee. Thank you and thank you for having me here so that I can advertise the fact that Caldwell County is having a fair this year. We are having a, a fair, and that is so exciting to know that that is back. It is. Let's start with the, the big question. When is the fair? Okay. The fair dates are Wednesday, September the 8th, through Saturday, September the 11th this year. And um, there are things to say, I guess, about uh, the fair, because since we didn't have a fair last year, thanks to COVID, which has upset a whole bunch of things, <laughs> but uh, we hope that people will plan to come and enjoy all of the fair this year. There will, of course, be the usual rides. Entrance, uh, of course, is Wednesday and Thursday. Those days are free admission. On Friday and Saturday for adults, the admission fee is $6. For children under 36 inches, they are free. And the 36 inches, which sounds a little strange, I guess, but that's a rule of the rides. Children over 36 inches and under 18 will be $4 this year. We are also going to be having a senior day on Thursday, which is going to be a little bit different from what we have had it in the past. What we are having this year is on Thursday the 9th, seniors can come into the fair and at four o'clock on Thursday, they will be given a ticket to go to the Collettsville booth and get either a hot dog or hamburger, plus fries, plus a drink for free. The exhibit hall will be open so that after eating, they can come in and enjoy the exhibit hall and what is in there. And that is the same day as the Sheep and Goat Show, is that correct? It's Thursday? That is correct. The Sheep and Goat Show will be on Thursday. The Cattle Show will be on Friday. So there's really a lot of things going on this year at the fair, but there are things that people can do now to get ready for the fair. Absolutely. One is, you need volunteers. We absolutely need volunteers. We are going to have the exhibit hall open this year, as we have had in the past. And I will go through in a minute some of the general rules for that, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of the items that we will be exhibiting. We need volunteers to help check in the exhibits, which will be on Tuesday before the fair opens on Wednesday. The hours for that will be eight o'clock in the morning until one o'clock in the afternoon, and then again, two o'clock in the afternoon until seven o'clock in the evening. Now, if somebody wants to volunteer, do they have to volunteer for both shifts or can they just pick one? they can pick the hours that they are willing to volunteer. Because we do not, that, that's a pretty good period of time. And um, the co-chairman and I will be there all day, but we do not expect volunteers who are giving freely of their time to necessarily be there all of that time. And I remember from a couple of years ago, it was quite warm in that building when they were checking things in. So, you know, that might be something to keep in mind. Won't volunteers, but it could be a warm day that day. It could be. There are fans mm -hmm. that work um, both in the front and in the back. 
of the exhibit hall, and they certainly will be going. Oh, yes. But we, we strive to make it as livable as possible uh, for really the entire fair, and especially for the check-in times. Uh, what kind of things can people exhibit? Okay, um, I will refer to this um, and give everyone a list of the departments that we have. More details about the departments will be on the Caldwell County website. Okay, photography, crafts and hobbies, field crops, horticultural products, which are veggies, flowers, handicrafts, needlework and clothing, honey and molasses, conserved products, which of course is the canning, culinary, cakes and breads and so forth, and eggs. Those, everything except the flowers and the culinary can be checked in on Tuesday from eight to one, and then again from two to seven. So if you want to bring something to the fair, which we strongly hope that you will and encourage you to do, you know, there is a goodly period of time in there that we hope will work around your work schedule or whatever other schedules you have so that you can bring those in to us. How much does it cost to enter something in the fair? No, that's free. To enter something, to, to do any of these categories, please bring nothing. Mm -hmm. there, is, there are prizes mm -hmm. for best, first, second, and third, and best of show. So we do have that. We've talked about entries coming in. And by the way, I will be there uh, so that if you are concerned about care, particularly for your flowers, I'm a master gardener and I will be looking after the flowers to see that they get as good, a, as good care as we can give them. Um, and you also work really hard to protect people's craft items. Oh, we do. Yes, we do. You don't leave them unguarded, so to speak. Craft and photography, stuff that you may want to display back in your home once the fair is over. Yes, yes. There are usually chains up. You know, there are, of course, the columns that go up to the, to the roof. And in between those columns, we have chains so that people cannot just walk in and touch the exhibits. So yes, we do try to carry, to, to be really protective about those. And of course, Diana and I will be there and we do keep a watchful eye out for things as much as we possibly can. Right, I mean, there's no absolute guarantees, but you are there watching now. I remember, uh, like we say, the last, I think it was the last fair, you had a, a beautiful model home built. Mm. Oh, yeah. Out, I don't even know what it was made out of, but it, it was an amazing piece. And it was. Maybe Keegan can find the footage of it so people will know what I'm talking about. But I, I do remember it, it was well roped off so that people could see it and enjoy it, but it was still protected. So as an artist, Absolutely. your work will be guarded. Right. So that's important, to, I think, to note. Thank you for bringing that out. Yes, it is. Uh, we talked about people bringing things in. The entries will be picked up on Sunday following the fair uh, between one and four. At that time also, the money for the prizes will be given to those people who have won that. Okay. okay. Um, I mentioned that Everything except flowers and culinary will come in eight to one, two to seven. Flowers and culinary will only be accepted from two to seven on Tuesday, and then they will be judged at 7.30 
that same evening in order to preserve their freshness. It's important to get those cakes in, those breads in, and what lucky judges <laughs> to get to taste all of those wonderful things. Oh yes, that's true. I, I'm, I'm a little jealous, I'm not <laughs> going to lie. I'm, I'm just thinking about all the deliciousness that they, they get to experience. Not that I'm qualified for that, but <laughs> wow. Mm. What an exciting job to have. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. now I wouldn't even mind being the person who tests the honey, but again, I have no <laughs> knowledge there, so. The beekeepers will provide a judge for the honey. See, so get the experts in. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't open it. Okay, so they just look at it. They, they look at it and, and do a candle. You know, it's like a, here's the jar. They look at, they look at it is to see how tr translucent it is and that sort of thing. So. Okay, I'm gonna ask a question and you, if you don't wanna answer it, it's fine, we can edit this out. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Your judges. Right. Where, where do these people come from? Because they obviously have some expertise in the areas. Different places. Um, we, two years ago, we had culinary, for instance. We had two people, one of whom is a chef, and the other one is just really an excellent cook. So I'm going to be asking those two people to do that again. Uh, flowers, the person who judged those uh, has been through a horticultural course and is very much qualified to be able to look at plants and see, mm -hmm. you know, the good, the good, the bad, and the ugly, if there's such a thing for a plant, <laughs> but, but a very well qualified people. Uh, the lady who did the judging on the needle craft mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, had been, was, is retired now, but had been a sewer, and she was meticulous about looking at quilts and, you know, how things were put together and that sort of thing. And we had some incredible quilts two years ago. You did, Absolutely. I remember they were, I, I, you're talking to someone that has zero crafting ability, so let's, I'm gonna go ahead and confess that. Uh, <laughs> I was blown away by the, mm -hmm. the quality, the just masterpieces, in my opinion. But I'm thinking, if I had any crafting ability to get that person's feedback on my work, mm -hmm. whether, whether you win or, or lose, you know, yeah. just to hear their feedback mm -hmm. could be very helpful in you know furthering your craft right it would so that's one reason another reason to enter and we've had we've had some just incredible entries into the crafts uh not needlework but right. but the crafts you know and paintings and photography i mean conwell county is really creative and this is a great chance to show off your creations. So please think about the fair and think about coming to exhibit your beautiful creations for the fair, for everybody. For everybody, and if you're not like me, go through the exhibit hall and, and admire all the work of the talented craftspeople we have here in Caldwell County. Absolutely. Another reason to go to the exhibit hall are the booths. Right. Tell me a little bit about the booths, the cost, okay. what's available. We have a number of booths that, that are available. They are on the perimeter of the building inside, of course. Um, for nonprofits, the booths are free. For a for-profit, they are $150 a piece. They are eight by 10. And if you are interested in it and have a business, some things can be sold at the booths. Um, otherwise, you could just exhibit whatever you have, bring information about your business or your organization, 
and let everybody come through, pick up what they want, need. If these are manned booths, some are and some aren't, you know, then whoever is there can answer questions about the product. A great way to, to reach out to, it is. to folks. Great advertisement. Mm -hmm. And relatively inexpensive advertisement. It is. It is. And the exhibit hall itself, we had a lot of comments two years ago about how light and bright the exhibit hall is. It is going to be newly painted and again light, bright, and we hope very welcoming for exhibitors and for the onlookers, the people who come in to see what is in there. But speaking of exhibitors, mm -hmm. I, I was just thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Now, for exhibits, I mean, obviously, like culinary, th that would have to be made fresh. But for crafts, is there a time frame that they have to be made in? There is. Okay, tell us what that is. It is from, well, it's a... It's, it's a little different this year because different. we missed a fair. <laughs> because we, but um, from the time that we would have had the fair in 2020, which basically is September, until this year, fair time this year, is when products that are exhibited should have should be made. So basically over the last year. Over the last year. If you had year. something, if you created something while you were locked down in co during COVID, now's the time to display it. Right. The exception, of course, is plants. Because some of the plants, you know, we keep for years and years. So, you know, plants are the exception to the, to the year rule. Right, and those again will be in that guide that'll be on the, that's on the county's website. So you yes. can go there and, and check out all the rules. Yes, and check out the details. Um, you know, there's so many, again, flowers for instance. You know, there's so many different kinds of flowers and potted plants and so forth, and all of that will be in that information. It's in that information and things are spelled out pretty well and help you to know what category things go in. Yes, yes. So that. I'd like to mention too that there will be a 4-H exhibit and to find out more information about that please call Sarah Coker at Cooperative Extension. That telephone number is 828-757-1290 and ask for Sarah Coker, who is the 4-H agent, and she can, can answer your questions. If you are interested in exhibiting anything and have further questions that you can't find on the website or don't have a computer, uh, whatever. Diana Jensen and I are the co-chair for the exhibit hall and again her name is Diana Jensen. Her telephone number is 828-446-5287. My name again is Lee L E E Cox, and my telephone number, which is a cell number, is 828-320-0069. So please call us if you have uh, questions about entries or booths, please let us know. The telephone number also for the Caldwell County Fair is 828-728-7050. What about people who want to volunteer? How do, they, how do they do that? Please call either Diana or me, okay. either one of us, or the fair. 
And they will connect you, tell you what you need to know. Yes. And, um, you know, when you can volunteer. And if you have a preference, you know, for one of these categories that, where the exhibits are. And is there a deadline to sign up to be a volunteer? We would like to know no later than Monday, which would be uh, two days before the fair. So you have some time, but mm -hmm. if, you, if you really want to volunteer, go ahead and reach out to Lee or to Diana now so they can get your Please. name on the list. Please. The sooner we know, the better. No, <laughs> otherwise we're going to be panicking at the last minute, <laughs> wondering if we have enough volunteers to check in the hopefully bunch of exhibits that will go into the fair. So really, we've talked about a lot today, Lee, so let's, mm -hmm. let's give a recap. Okay. When is the fair? The fair is Wednesday, September the 8th through Saturday, September the 11th. And I think I forgot to mention the dates, um, the times that the fair gates open. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the fair gates open at 5 o'clock. The exception to that one being on Senior Day on Thursday when it will open for seniors only. On Saturday, the gates will open at 1 o'clock and the fair closes all days at 11. So that's when the fair is. Right. To volunteer for the fair, mm -hmm. they need to call Diana Jensen, 828-446-5287, or me, Lee, at 828-320-0069. Now, to exhibit something at the fair, what do they need to do? Same number, same people, same numbers, Diana or me. And or if they don't have any questions, they can bring their items for exhibit to the fair on Wednesday? Wednesday. And there is a form that needs to be filled out for those who are exhibiting. This is the form and it will be on the mm -hmm. website. Yes. And if people can go ahead and print and complete that form before coming, it saves a lot of time. It does. It does for them and for us. Just makes things go a little more efficiently. Now, yes. do you need a separate form for each item you're exhibiting or no. can it all go on one form? It all goes on one form. Okay. Make it easy for the exhibitors. <laughs> yes, yes, cause, because a lot of people will exhibit several different things. Thankfully, yes, they do. Um, our gardeners tend to have several horticulture, different veggies that they right, right. exhibit. So, well, Lee, I'm looking forward to the fair, and I'm looking Thank forward you. to maybe, you know, getting out to the fairgrounds and previewing a little bit Wonderful. closer to the fair. Right. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. And thank you for watching Caldwell County Today.